He was numbered with the transgressors. Why did Jesus suffer himself to be enrolled amongst sinners? This wonderful condescension was justified by many powerful reasons. In such a character, he could the better become their advocate. In some trials, there is an identification of the counselor with the client, nor can they be looked upon in the eye of the laws apart from one another. Now, when the sinner is brought to the bar, Jesus appears there himself. He stands to answer the accusation. He points to his side, his hands, his feet, and challenges justice to bring anything against the sinners whom he represents. He pleads his blood, and pleads so triumphantly, being numbered with them, and having a part with them, that the judge proclaims, Let them go their way, deliver them from going down into the pit, for he hath found a ransom. Our Lord Jesus was numbered with the transgressors in order that they might feel their hearts drawn towards him. Who can be afraid of one who is written in the same list with us? Surely we may come boldly to him and confess our guilt. He who is numbered with us cannot condemn us. Was he not put down in the transgressors list that we might be written in the red roll of the saints? He was holy and written among the holy. We were guilty and numbered among the guilty. He transfers his name from yonder list to this black indictment, and our names are taken from the indictment and written in the roll of acceptance. For there is a complete transfer made between Jesus and his people. All our state of misery and sin, Jesus has taken. And all that Jesus has comes to us. His righteousness, his blood, and everything that he hath given us as our dowry. Rejoice, believer, in your union to him who was numbered among the transgressors, and prove that you are truly saved by being manifestly numbered with those who are new creatures in him. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. The spouse who fondly loves her absent husband longs for his return. A long protracted separation from her Lord is a semi-death to her spirit. And so with souls who love the Savior much, they must see his face. They cannot bear that he should be away upon the mountains of Bather and no more hold communion with them. A reproaching glance and uplifted finger and will be grievous to the loving children who fear to offend their tender father and are only happy in his smile. Beloved it was so once with you, a text of scripture, a threatening, a touch of the rod of affliction, and you went to your father's feet crying, Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. As it is so now, are you a content to follow Jesus afar off? Can you contemplate suspended communion with Christ without alarm? Can you bear to have your beloved walking contrary to you, because you walk contrary to him? Have your sins separated between you and your God, and is your heart at rest? Oh, let me affectionately warm you, for it is a grievous thing when we can live contentedly without the present enjoyment of the Savior's face. Let us labor to feel what an evil thing this is, little love to our own dying Savior, little joy in our precious Jesus, little fellowship with the Beloved. Hold a true Lent in your souls while you sorrow over your hardness of heart. Do not stop at sorrow. Remember when you first received salvation. Go at once to the cross. There, and there only, can you get your spirit quickened. No matter how hard, how insensible, how dead we may have become, let us go again in all the rags and poverty and defilement of our natural condition. Let us clasp that cross. Let us look into those languid eyes. Let us bathe in that fountain filled with blood. This will bring back to us our first love. This will restore the simplicity of our faith and the tenderness of our heart.